Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Bert and Albion. We have made it all the way until the start of March, well the 11th of March. We've also made it all the way into the playoffs. We are now up to 5th place in the league. I don't really understand how it happened, but we've actually been on quite a good little run of form lately, which has clearly pushed us up into the top 5. Since the last episode, we've played a total of six league games. First up was against Hull, and we managed to just about win this thanks to a 93rd minute winner from substitute and right back Mitch Clark. Afondo Souza, Neil Williams, and Clark were the goals for us. Adama Diakabe and Noah Dicko were the goals for Hull, but that is a very good result away from home, as you can see by the stats of our uh, players there. Some players played ridiculously well, not in particular Souza. And Anderson. Anderson was on fire. They probably should have scored more goals, but Anderson, just, he, he was just a revelation in goal. Then next up against West Brom, a team that we lost 4-0 to earlier on in the season at home. We win 1-0. Neil Williams with the only goal of the game, and once again, Anderson on fire. McCarthy also getting an 8.3 rating. Yes, we kind of did FM them a little bit. Just the four shots for us, ten for them. I don't care. It's about time we've done this to a team. And a third win in a row, this time up against Sheffield United. Jake Vokins with the only goal, giving us a 1-0 victory. But look at that performance again from the defence. McCarthy a 7.9. Vokins also getting a 7.9 as well. Strikers, not so great in this one, but it doesn't matter. As long as someone's getting the goals, I'm fine with it. Our little run of wins comes to an end against Portsmouth. It was a 1-1 draw. Ronan Curtis with a penalty after just three minutes. Joe Sparrow then pulls on back ten minutes into the second half. We still played well. We did have a very good game. Unfortunately, we couldn't really do anything in this. Uh, 16 shots to their five. Probably should have won it, but unfortunately, we didn't manage to do that. We still get a point, though. But it is back to winning ways up against Brentford. A 1-0 victory here. And that man, Joe Sparrow, once again. And look at the player ratings. Sometimes my team just decides, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to play like we are the world's best football team. And stuff like this happens. 16 shots, 10 on target. It's a shame we only scored the one goal. It doesn't matter, though, because we do get all three points from it. And finally up against Nottingham Forest, it was a 3-1 victory here as well. Jonas David and Jake Vokins with the goals. Vokins gets himself two from left back. Eric Exposito scored for Nottingham Forest. But look at the match stats in this one. 25 shots, 10 on target. Forest had 4-1. Four, four shots, one on target. We destroyed Nottingham Forest. And I mean destroyed Nottingham Forest. I don't know what's happened to our team, but we are now unbeaten in about nine games or something stupid like that. Ten games. Unbeaten in ten. The last defeat was on the 14th of January against Southampton. This is ridiculous. Millwall, Huddersfield, Preston, Hull, West Brom, Sheffield United, Brentford and Nottingham Forest. We've all beaten. We've drawn with Bolton and Portsmouth, which is why the league table looks like it does. Up into fifth place, 66 points. We are four points clear of Leeds, who are in seventh place. That is obviously the team that can actually catch up. Well, I say catch us. That is the, the lowest, the highest place we can finish without getting the playoffs, which is fairly obvious because it's the one not coloured in blue. Khalifa Diop. Now, the Senegalese man, the uh, the new signing for us, joined in December, free transfer. He played some under-23s football. And on his debut against Bromley, he got sent off. And then against Harrogate, he got a 6.3. And then against Barnsley, he got a 6.3. I don't understand this player. I mean, he was playing attack in midfield. I don't think that's going to make too much difference for the first two. Barnsley wasn't very good either. Did get a goal, though, finally against Wigan. Um, if we actually look at his first team appearances as well, I have been sort of sporadically playing him. Against Bolton, 6.3 wasn't very good, obviously. He's, Sheffield United came on too late. 6.5 against Portsmouth came on too late against Brentford. He, I wouldn't, really do want him to start playing well, and he is really struggling. I don't. Can you speak English? Is that the problem? Is, is language the barrier? You can speak basic English. I don't know why. We have also had our youth intake in. I've actually gone through a few of these players. Some of the high potential ones, I don't think are that good. Like this guy, Jimmy Paul, I don't think he's that great. He's not terrible, but mentally, he's pretty bad. There's a couple of players down here. Kevin Wint, 
he's one that I'm looking at going, actually, you are quite good. I think you're probably better than your three star potential says. As well as Oliver Enver, who is a six foot eight central defender. Um, everybody needs a six foot eight central. He's, he's 16 years old and he's six foot bloody eight. Right, admin out of the way then. Today we're going to have two matches, Birmingham and Middlesbrough. Birmingham are currently 23rd in the table, Middlesbrough are 16th. So, are we going to extend our unbeaten run to 14, 14, 12 games? That's how numbers work. We're on 10, plus 2 equals 12, Stuart. I have just realised we're not playing Birmingham for another two weeks. So, yeah, I'm going to, I don't know, go away and have a cup of tea or something. Welcome back. The 14 days have passed and it is now time for the Birmingham game. It looks like we are going to be without Mark Gooey, who is off on international duty, but it also means... I say it also means. It doesn't also mean this at all. Harley Dean is missing. Derek Williams is missing. Reese James is also missing for Birmingham. So they do have quite a lot of players missing. They are down in 23rd, so they are in a relegation battle. Hold on, Bradford have won a third game. Who did they beat this time? It was Millwall by the looks of it. Good job, Bradford. Is the comeback happening? 20 points. Is it doable? That's the gap between bottom and 24. I don't think they're getting out of it. The starting lineup we are going to go for then. In goal will be Curtis Anderson, Jason McCarthy, Cameron Humphreys, AD Stevenson and Jake Vokins are going to be the back four. Humphreys comes in for Mark Gooey. Jonas David and Oliver Skip will be the two deep-lying midfielders with Joe Sparrow, Callum Gribben and Alfonso Suzo as the attacking midfielders. And Neil Williams will be our main goal-scoring threat. Khalifa Diop is on the bench and expect him to come on about the 60th minute and then annoy me by about the 65th minute. The reason why I've picked Cameron Humphreys over um, Ashley Eastham is because Cameron Humphreys wants first-team football and he's just as good. And Cameron Humphreys actually has a bit of potential. So I'm thinking let's give Humphreys some game time and hopefully he can prove a point. Gribben with a free kick after just two minutes and A.D. Stevenson, the central defender, has got his third goal of the season. He stopped making mistakes as well. A.D. Stevenson is getting good at football. This is a very weird goal to score, particularly for a central defender. We're one and up after just two minutes and we could be condemning Birmingham to a horrible season of relegation. Jota with a corner for Birmingham to the six-yard box. Anderson leaps out and claims it. Curtis Anderson then, the Manchester City youngster, on loan until the end of the season. Rolls out to Oliver Skip, back to Anderson. Long ball upfield to Williams, heads down to Gribben. Afonso Souza runs onto it. He's got no support, goes for goal himself. And it's a corner. That was a great save from the goalkeeper. Gribben takes the corner. It's deep to Skip. Skip goes for goal. Woodward saves it once again and we get another corner. Gribben runs over to take this one as well. Where is it going to go? Penalty spot. It's deep. It's very deep. It's not very good. And we're going to win a throw on. 27 minutes on the clock. Colin. That's Joe Sparrow gets there first though. Afonso Souza. Deep in her own half. Long ball finds Williams. Williams one on one with a keeper. And a terrible effort from the Wales International. Could have been 2-0. Probably should have been 2-0. So far, Birmingham have yet to have a shot. Woodward's goal kick over the halfway line. Stevenson heads forward, but it's coming back towards us. Stevenson once again gets it another time. Afonso Souza forward. Can't find any one of our players. Jota now plays it all the way back to Woodward in goal. First time kick up field. Afonso Souza. No. Jota now. Waller with the ball. Runs forward. Che Adams across to Jota. Into the area. Plenty of blue shirts in there. Jenkins and crosses in. Colin is there at the back. Alaga goes for goal. And it is he's hit the bar. Vokins manages to scuff it clear. The first effort from Birmingham has hit the bar. Half time then. It's been a very one-sided match. But only one goal so far. Birmingham possibly could have had a goal themselves. I'm thinking... Neil Williams off for Khalifa Diop. It could be a bad thing to do, but Williams hasn't had the best of games so far. He's on a 6.5. Diop, I just want him to play well. I'm spending £8,000 a week on this man. I want it to kind of seem worthwhile. Jenkinson with a free kick for Birmingham. McCarthy can get it clear just about. Maori now on the left for Birmingham. Jonas David, the German in international. He's not an international at all. He just tackles him. Ball upfield, but Tommy Hoban heads forward. Cleared upfield again. Skip now. Afonso Souza. Vokins is making a run. And what a ball that is from the Portuguese man. Vokins crosses in. Diop is there. Can't win the header. McCarthy controls it. Joe Sparra needs someone running. David. Afonso Souza back to David. McCarthy's going to get this at some point. Souza goes for goal. A curling effort from well outside the area, but it is over the bar. 
Gribben with the corner. It's gone to Jonas David and A.D. Stevenson has his second goal of the game. His fourth of the season. We are 2-0 up against Birmingham. If we win a penalty now, A.D. Stevenson will be stepping up and taking it. 20 minutes to play. We're going to bring on Mitch Clark. Mitch Clark, much like Cameron Humphreys, he wants first team football. So I'm trying to kind of give him as much as I can get away with, really. Joe Sparrow also is going to come off. For Samuel Shoshoa, who is a player who doesn't really get enough chances because Gribben, Souza, and Sparrow are kind of they're such a well like knit unit at the moment. So Shoshoa misses out quite a lot. We've got ten minutes to play. Nothing has happened since the substitutions. Gribben with a free kick goes for goal. It is just over the bar. Final five minutes. Is anything else going to happen in this game? The answer is no. It's unlikely. We've got twenty seconds left to play. It is going to be three more points, hopefully, against Birmingham. Well, they're not going to score two goals in 20 seconds, are they? And we are going to remain in the playoffs. In fact, we are probably going to cement ourselves slightly further in the playoff. Mitch Clark trips Trevor Clark, who is obviously one of our former players. We are over the 93 referee. There we go. The full-time whistle goes. Goes? Goes, even. A.D. Stevenson gets mad of the match. 24 shots. 11 on target. Strode to perform. What a surprise. Khalifa Diop. I got my assistant to do the team talk, as I always do, and uh, he nailed it this time. Another victory then moves us closer to Crystal Palace, who are on 72 points. Palace must have lost their game, or they, they have, no, they drew 0-0 with Cardiff. So we are getting slightly closer to actually being in fourth place, I think. If I'm perfectly honest, automatic promotion isn't going to happen, is it? I think that's probably too far away. Welcome back. It is April Fool's Day in the game. It is the 1st of April 2023 and we are up against 16th place Middlesbrough. If, if we get a victory here, we will go joint on point with Crystal Palace, assuming Crystal Palace lose with Charlton. They're playing later on though, so we could go joint fourth. Southampton must have played yesterday and I believe they must have actually lost their game yesterday as well because they haven't closed the gap. So... This is now our time to go potentially six points clear of sixth place, which is perfect. I believe we've done just the one change for this match. In goal is Curtis Anderson, Jason McCarthy, Cameron Humphreys, A.D. Stevenson and Jake Vokens are the back four. Jonas David and Oliver Skimp will be the central midfielders. Sparrow Gribben and Souza will be the attacking midfielders. And Khalifa Diop is going to get a start today, but he, he did play for the under-23s a few days ago, which I don't know how well he did in that, actually. Neil Williams has dropped to the bench. Mark Gooey is back from international duty, but he's on a 75% fitness, so we don't want to give him a run out just yet. Hopefully, we can keep our unbeaten run going, and it will go up to 12 games if we don't lose against Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough have one regen, and Jesus, he's amazing. He He's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He's a wonder kid on loan from Everton. He's worth £3.2 million, and that's it. That's all he's worth. Ronnie Philpotts is probably going to score against us. Right, I need a performance from Khalifa Diop. I need him to actually do something, get an assist, a goal, something like that is really what I want from him. Already, I'm think, pretty sure he's number 11. He's just chased all the way back for that ball for some reason. 20 minutes in... And nothing has happened at all. Two shots in total, zero on target. Throw on for us, McCarthy forward to Callum Gribben. Back to Jason McCarthy. He's got too many Middlesbrough players in front of him. Skip in the middle, back to Jonas David. Skip again. Afonso Souza. Vokins has made a run, but he stopped his run. Vokins does get the ball, though. Where are you going to go? Jonas David. David, across to Sparrow. McCarthy was making a run into the box. David gets it again. They're passing it, but not going anywhere. McCarthy on the right-hand side. Three in the box, crosses in. Joe Sparrow is one of them, and it is over the bar. Well-worked effort, but not a very good end product. McCarthy's throw finds Joe Sparrow to Callum Gribben. If he can cross in, he's got a... It's a penalty. It is a penalty. Who is stepping up to take it? It's probably Joe Sparrow, isn't it? I was thinking... Maybe Khalifa Diop should take penalties. Joe Sparrow steps up, puts it into the bottom corner. The goalkeeper didn't even dive for it, which was really weird. Sparrow, seven goals this season out, 30 minutes on the clock, 1-0 up against Middlesbrough. Three more points inbound, hopefully. 
Nick Pope with a free kick for Middlesbrough. Headed for by Eddie Stevenson. Joe Sparrow, the goal scorer, gets it. Gribben runs forward. Plays it into Afonso Souza. And Afonso Souza puts it across the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. And it is 2-0 against Middlesbrough. And we are looking good for another victory. I think my team might be being held up by the three attacker midfielders. I think those three are the ones that are kind of doing all the work for us. Half time then, it is 2-0 and Khalifa Diop has made three mistakes. This man is... I don't know what it is. He's just out to annoy me. I've kept Diop on for now. He will be getting subbed because he's very tired, but I've kept him on, given him another like 10-15 minutes to see if he can actually do anything, like anything productive at all. Free kick for Middlesbrough goes for goal. Clips the top of the bar. First real effort we've seen from them. We are just approaching the 60 minute mark, which is the mark where Neil Williams will come on. Gribben's free kick finds Vokins and his effort is just over the bar. 60 minutes on the clock. Time for a sub. Diop for Williams. Khalifa Diop. I mean, mate, do I loan him out next season? I feel like that's a terrible thing to do for a player who's getting paid £8,000 a week. Who probably won't like he won't get a work permit to play for anyone else. Final 20 minutes of the game. I'm gonna give the team a little bit of encouragement. Gribbons at free kick. McCarthy is there, and Jason McCarthy has made it 3-0. We are scoring goals from defenders quite a lot at the moment. His first goal of the season, Jason McCarthy. Last year, I think he scored about 14. Moxie with a corner for Middlesbrough. It's gone very deep. McNair, no, it's a penalty. Afonso Souza has put, pushed McNair. So, it is going to be number possibly 11. Moxie against Anderson and Curtis Anderson has made a save. He's going to keep his clean sheet bonus, assuming he gets one. Why are we seeing the goal line technology? It didn't go in. He saved the ball. And hopefully that is the last action of the game. We've got three minutes of injury time that has all disappeared. Ten seconds left to play. Is it going to be four? It's not going to be four. It's a free kick. It is going to be full time then at the Riverside. It is 3-0 to Burton Albion. Was not expecting that result. Three more points. And more importantly, we are cementing ourselves as a team sat in the playoffs. So it does look like playoff football might be heading our way this year. Look at those match ratings. And then look at the two strikers. 6.5 and a 6.6. Everyone else was ridiculous. Watford have secured a playoff spot. I thought that was us then. Um, right, so we are fifth in the table, 72 points. That's, hold on, hold, what? Wait, yes, no, that is correct. So some of the other teams, Hull were a team that were chasing, dropped points against Brentford. Leeds managed to beat Cardiff, so they have now leapt up into seventh place. We are seven points. We are seven points now, clear of seventh place. Later on, Crystal Palace play Charlton. We are going to go forward to see what happens there. Hopefully, Charlton can do something. They do need to get some wins on the board because if they don't, they will be in a relegation fight. And also, Bradford have finally been relegated. I don't know how long ago they got relegated, but they are now relegated. Three wins, four draws, 33 defeats, 13 points on the board so far. And there's still six more games left of the season to go. Unfortunately for us, Palace managed to beat Charlton, so it does mean that we are still 5th place. We are not joint in, fi in 4th place now, we are sat there on our own in 5th place. Our goal difference is a bit of a problem compared to some of the teams above us, not necessarily some of the teams below us now. Next episode, we're going to go to the final two games of the season, and they are going to be big ones. Crystal Palace in 4th place, and then our former club Blackburn Rovers down in 11th place. In the middle, just the four games, Bristol City, who are ninth, who have the top scoring player in the league with 29 goals. I can't pronounce his name, but he's ridiculous. Scores way too many goals for my liking. Derby, who are in 15th. Bradford, who are already relegated. And Leeds, who are in 7th. So the Leeds game, depending on how things are going, we might see the Leeds game because that could be a huge match as well. Currently sat in 7th place. Maybe we're battling them for the final playoff spot. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2019 with Burton Albion. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time.